Did you know that you can turn ordinary copper into a super bright fluorescent powder? To make this chemical, the first thing you need is copper iodide, which I need to make myself from copper sulfate since it's not really something you can easily buy. To do this, all you really have to do is dissolve a little bit of copper sulfate in some water and then add sodium metabisulfite. This will turn green as the copper 2 ions are reduced to copper 1 ions, and at this point, all you have to do is add some potassium iodide. Copper iodide is insoluble in water, so at this point, all you do is filter it off, dry it out, and crush it into a powder. Once you've got copper iodide, the next step is to combine the copper iodide with excess potassium iodide to form a soluble copper iodide complex. This is part A of our mixture, and for part B, all we have to do is combine one part pyridine with four parts acetone. Now for the final step, all we have to do is pour the organic pyridine mixture into the copper iodide mixture and the product will immediately begin to form. As a quick safety note, do be careful when handling pyridine because it's toxic and it smells terrible. Anyway, our product here is a fascinating metal organic complex between copper, pyridine, and iodine. I honestly don't know what this chemical would be called, but it has a fascinating geometry where all of the pyridine molecules are pointing outward. Anyway, to clean this stuff up, I simply rinse it with a bunch of water and then collect it in my Buchner funnel. Once it's totally dry, I went ahead and weighed it and calculated a 92.8% yield, which I think is pretty good. Now for the fun part. If I take this chemical and place it under UV light, it fluoresces a very bright yellow. This color is even more intense when I turn the lights off, and it's so bright you can't even see the UV light. As a quick side note, this stuff looks best under shortwave UV light, which is the kind you might use for detecting counterfeit currency. Anyway, I think this stuff is super cool, and if it's totally dry, it'll last for years. On that note, you can also make a green variant of this compound that isn't nearly as stable, but also looks really cool. It can be made in basically the same way as the yellow variant, except this time I'm doing it in a test tube at about one-tenth the scale. However, you'll notice that this time, pyridine is in a massive excess, and I didn't use any acetone. That's because for this complex, instead of copper and pyridine being bound in equimolar amounts, there's twice as many pyridine molecules as there are copper ions. I don't really know what this complex would look like, as I can't find any literature on it, but as I mentioned earlier, it's not really stable. I've had good luck storing it in an ampule, but otherwise, the green variant will slowly lose pyridine and become the yellow variant over time. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope you found this interesting, and as always, follow for more chemistry.